Welcome to the public affairs program of KNAT TV, Join Our Town. My name is Mike Cosgrove. It's such a pleasure to have you joining us today. Uh, we have an old friend of our show uh, with us today, Paul Guessing. Paul is the president of the Rio Grande Foundation, been here a few times with us in the past, and it's always a pleasure to have you. Good to see you again, Mike. You too. Uh, today we're going to talk about something that affects our pocketbooks and our purses right now, and uh, the economy, and specifically gas prices. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you, I've enjoyed having them lower for a while, but now, of course, they're moving again. Right. And uh, I'd kind of like to help our audience see a little bit about why that is and what's going on with this. So I guess the best place to start is, uh, and we've talked about this before, uh, it's well known that New Mexico relies very heavily on oil and natural gas for job creation and mm -hmm. uh, doing those things in terms of the state budget. Uh, give me a little bit of context for that. Well, first and foremost, 31% of our state's budget is derived from oil and gas. Uh, that's direct impact and some of the pass-through money, you know, a restaurant that serves oil and gas workers, uh, calculating that in, 31% of the tax revenue that our state spends every year is directly oil and gas money. So it's a huge factor. Mm -hmm. We're the third most reliant state of any state on oil and gas. Only Alaska and Wyoming rely uh, on, a, on oil and gas for a greater percentage of their budgets. Uh, but also, of course, the job growth. And as New Mexico has struggled economically in recent years, since the economic crisis, really, in 2008, 2009, the one area of the state that has grown significantly is the oil patch down in southeastern New Mexico, Hobbs, Artesia, right. et cetera. Uh, you couldn't get a hotel room in those places. Their unemployment rates were next to nothing. And uh, those places really... Uh, were the backbone of New Mexico during tough economic times. Mm. So uh, it, we are a very reliant state when it comes to oil and gas. And right now, uh, the Santa Fe, uh, the legislature's meeting in Santa Fe, and they are watching revenue uh, projections decline very rapidly over time because the prices are not where they had been on the oil side. Mm. So New Mexico, are we even more reliant than Texas? My, my natural assumption would be Texas would be so reliant on that. You're right. Uh, Texas has kind of the, uh, the popular perception as the center of the oil and gas industries. And it is a big part of what Texas does. Uh, of course, they had the TV show Dallas so many right, years right. ago, and uh, that really cemented in people's minds that it was all about oil and gas. But Texas has successfully diversified its economy beyond oil and gas to the point where New Mexico, uh, as a percentage of its budget, and that's uh, really what we're talking about, you know, right. New Mexico is a two million person state, whereas Texas, I don't even know, but it's several well, multiples of yes. that. Uh, Texas uh, is not as reliant. They've diversified. They have economic policies in place that have made Texas uh, a state that all kinds of businesses want to locate in, not just those affiliated with the oil and gas industries. And it's so important for every state to have multiple income stream, you know, to be reliant on to do that. And uh, the old saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Right. Well, Texas definitely is heavily diversified. Uh, New Mexico, really, aside from oil and gas and some other mineral production, it's the federal government that's always driven our economy. Mm -hmm. So uh, once you throw out you know, practically a third of oil and gas, uh, a third of our budget oil and gas, then you have the federal government, and that is a huge uh, driver of our economy, also not growing the way it has been. Now, that's a bad thing for a lot of New Mexico businesses. As a fiscal conservative, as someone who... Uh, knows that the United States budget needs to get out of red ink, uh, out of deficits sure. as far as the eye can see and be balanced at some point moving forward. Uh, I at least look at this as a situation that's good for the country as a whole, if not so great for New Mexico. Uh, and those are the two uh, issues that, uh, those are the two things that really have driven New Mexico's economy. It should be a, a wake-up call to legislators and folks in Santa Fe that, hey, we need to follow more of the Texas model and diversify our economy, okay. make ourselves more attractive in the private sector, not just oil and gas and the federal spending. Absolutely. Uh, so the reliance, you know, when we say is it a good or a bad thing, it's not a good thing overall to be reliant on any one resource or two even to do that. Right. Well, reliance is a bad thing. I mean, yeah. it is a... Uh, 
over-reliance, I guess, issue in New Mexico. We certainly support oil and gas industries sure. and support our ability to use those resources, not to put undue regulations and rules on those uh, resources. And some folks have done that around New Mexico. Uh, Mora County in our state has uh, attempted to restrict any oil and gas uh, exploration or drilling in the state in, in that area of the state wow. and that was uh, fortunately overturned but it's something that can be problematic uh, we have two regions of our state where uh, oil and gas are typically uh, drilled or uh, gotten out of the ground one is the four corners area of farmington san juan basin that's predominantly natural gas uh, southeastern new mexico is uh, the Permian Basin, and that's predominantly oil. Natural gas price has been down for years and years. Yeah, we've thanks, talked about that before, actually. Thanks to the fracking yeah. that's happening all over the country, uh, and prices are just low. So that area of the state's been struggling. But the oil prices uh, had been very high up until recently, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to see how that impacts the southeastern part of the state. But uh, oil had been the last real good thing going for New Mexico's economy uh, mm -hmm. until the prices went from over $100 a barrel down to uh, 50 and below. Wow. Big changes for us. Big changes Absolutely. for us. Uh, who's being impacted by these low prices right now? Who does it affect most? Well, obviously, you and I at yeah. the pump. That we, uh, as folks who don't work in the oil fields directly, mm -hmm. Uh, we see this as a good thing, and for most New Mexicans, it's probably a positive uh, when they go to the pump. Uh, they're seeing uh, prices, they've crept back up a little bit, uh, and that's unrelated to the price per barrel. It's uh, summer blends coming into uh, play. Uh, the EPA mandates that you have to change the formulation of, uh, of the gasoline at the pump, and so it... Oh. Uh, there's a transition period and the refineries have to adjust and rework how they process the fuel. That's one issue. So we've seen the prices creep back up a right. little bit, but they're still tremendously lower than we, we've seen them uh, back over, say, last summer. And then you have uh, a strike. There was, has been a strike, the United Steelworkers at refineries. And so that's compressed the ability to uh, process the fuel, again, regardless of the barrel uh, price of uh, oil. So on the flip side, who's been negatively impacted? Of course, it's the workers in the steel yes. and in, in the oil and gas uh, industry, oil patch predominantly down in southeastern New Mexico. Uh, but we're already seeing it filter through the state budget and the higher education, uh, UNM, CNM, mm. those folks are seeing their budgets uh, crimped significantly because they're big uh, consumers of those tax dollars coming into the state. Uh, so there's a lot of folks looking for money in the state budget who aren't seeing it because of this, uh, this situation. Hmm. You know, you brought up something that uh, I think is, a lot of people don't know, is how the price of gas is determined. How is that determined? And you mentioned a couple of things. I hate to admit it, I didn't know any of that stuff was going on. All I hear about is, Man, the darn price went up again. Why can't we use our own oil? Why are we dependent on overseas? What is, how does that happen? If you're speaking to the layperson, which would be me, uh, how would you explain what's going on with the prices of gas? What affects that? Well, first and foremost, I would say that the price of gas is very competitive. Uh, it is not something that's easily manipulated like a lot of people think of. Yeah. Because where else do you go? You know, Albertsons and Smiths don't have signs out in their front parking lot typically saying, price of a gallon of milk is uh, X, Y, and Z. You have to go into the store, you have to invest some time and energy into going into the store. At gas stations, everyone in the city has a big sign out front saying, this is the price of gas. That's right. So they're competing first and foremost on that price. And uh, it's just very uh, hard for people to manipulate that process. So uh, you have like I said, the processing and refining uh, mm -hmm. takes a, a chunk. Uh, and there are different types of oil that come out of the ground. There's heavy uh, crude, there's light sweet, and these require different processes. In fact, right. right now in Washington, uh, Washington, D.C., there's a big discussion going on about exporting oil. 
the United States exporting oil. This is something that nobody ever thought. If you're a child sure. of the 60s or 70s, you saw the gas lines back uh, Oh, in those boy, days, I remember that, yeah. You okay. would never have thought that we would be an exporter of oil. But it's really a possibility. And it's a good thing because it would actually allow the best match for the refineries to get the heavy crude, the stuff with sulfur in it, uh, versus the light sweet. So it allows that matchup to happen, whereas if you can't export it, you have to uh, somehow jury-rig the process to get, uh, get what you want out of the, that process. So it's, hmm. a, uh, it's very complicated, and it it's is. amazing that when you go to the gas station, you consider all the steps, some of the politically unstable regions where you produce oil, uh, and yet it's cheaper than buying a gallon of milk. Yeah, I, I've heard that so many times, you know, but we don't think about it that way, do we? No, but most yeah. people don't, and uh, it, it's partially because it's, it is complicated, yeah. and it's, uh, it's very difficult to understand all these different processes. And by all means, I am no engineer. I'm no petroleum <laughs> engineer. I'm not an expert in all of that, but I can talk about the economics, and uh, granted, it is uh, so important for New Mexico. This idea of exporting uh, that's taken hold in Washington that has been discussed but hasn't been acted upon would be tremendously beneficial for mm -hmm. uh, our state, and uh, our senators, Heinrich and Udall, and our representatives uh, should be engaged in this and uh, pushing this forward because uh, our state is struggling right now, and yeah. as oil prices stay low, which most analysts see them pretty low for the foreseeable future. There's more worries about a glut than there are about shortages hmm. right now. Uh, we can put our oil to best use by exchanging it, trading it with other countries, and uh, that would ultimately be best for New Mexico as a state and for consumers as well. You know, something that, like you said, we never would have thought of that. You know, I'm, I'm an older gentleman, we'll just leave it at that, but I remember being in those lines and the thought of being able to do uh, shipping, uh, exporting those comes as a surprise to me. And I, I would guess that the majority of our viewers are probably saying, look, why don't we keep that gas here and let's lower it down from $2.29, let's lower that down to $1.50 and use our own oil. Yeah, well, if you can't process it, you can't create those cheaper prices at the pump. And that's really what it boils down to is we've got a lot of uh, one type of oil and uh, we, we have potential customers who want to buy that, which is good for New Mexico. Right. Uh, and, and when you drill for oil, you don't necessarily get all of what you want. You, you get what comes out of the ground. Right, exactly. And it's not like you can manufacture some product and then as demand shifts, you manufacture a different product. Mm -hmm. it, you deal with the cards uh, you've got. And that's what we're trying to do uh, with the oil export issue and uh, trying to match everything up. And it's best for New Mexico's budget and uh, uh, us at the, at the pump. Very good. Now, uh, we're running a little bit short on time, but uh, Paul, is there anything that uh, policymakers in Washington or even right here in Santa Fe, uh, in a nutshell, what would you recommend that they can do to help these uh, industries in New Mexico? Well, certainly the exports is a huge uh, aspect of that. But I would also urge them not to rush into jumping uh, on the tax increase bandwagon. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of talk both in Washington and at the state level, say, hell, well, prices are down, let's raise taxes right. uh, because the roads uh, maybe need repair. And certainly there is a need for repairing uh, of certain roads here in New Mexico, sure. around the country. We've all driven on, on poorly uh, designed roads or poorly maintained roads. But that doesn't mean we need to raise taxes immediately. There's other uh, ways to go ahead and uh, make those roads better. Dedicating all the uh, taxes that we pay as motorists to those roads and uh, also taking off certain restrictions that raise the price of uh, construction, something called Davis-Bacon. But mm -hmm. that's a different issue for a different discussion. Uh, but there's ways to make more roads for the same or less money as we're spending right now that don't involve massive tax increases on American motorists. I like that. I like not raising taxes. I think that's a great thing to do. Paul, thank you so much for being part of the show today. As always, it's a privilege to have you on. Thank you, Mike. And for those of you joining us today on Join Our Town, thanks you for being part of it. And uh, my name is Mike Cosgrove. Have a blessed day. We're all part of your community. 
We all play a role in keeping our community safe. So protect your every day. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Welcome back. Uh, my name is Mike Cosgrove. This is Joy in Our Town, the public affairs program for KNAT TV. And we're just so very fortunate to have Paul Guessing, the president of the Rio Grande Foundation, here with us. And today we're going to be talking about something that's very important to all of us. How is the economy doing in New Mexico? Paul, again, thank you for being here. Thank you. We've got a lot of issues that are going on here in the state, some of which we've already discussed. But right now, what are some of the major issues that you see affecting New Mexico's economy? Well, certainly we just talked about the downward uh, trend in terms of the oil and gas prices, and that is impacting the revenue situation. We've seen during the uh, 2015 legislative session how those revenue estimates due to the, the taxes raised, especially on oil prices, have been going downward significantly as uh, prices decline from 100 plus dollars a barrel down to $50 and below. Uh, other than that, the federal government is evolving and changing and people who follow those issues in Washington are aware of what's going on, but average citizens are not because what's happening is that so-called discretionary spending mm -hmm. in Washington is on a downward trajectory. And I think this is a good thing, but this is a challenge for New Mexico. Specifically, Department of Energy and Defense-related spending, two issues, two aspects of the federal government that really disproportionately impact New Mexico, those are shrinking as we're seeing the entitlements, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, mm. grow and grow and grow yes. uh, and consume more of the federal budget. So New Mexico has Kirtland Air Force Base. We have Cannon Air Force Base. We have uh, a number of other military installations. We're the only state with two national laboratories. And those uh, are shrinking somewhat mm. in their impact on New Mexico is uh, you know, being felt as jobs are reduced in those uh, facilities. And so it's a, a huge factor for New Mexico's economy right now. You, you know, it's such a, a, a big issue because a few years ago there was talk about closing down some of the bases and in not only here but in other parts of the country as well. And uh, since such a large percentage of our money comes from that area, it'd be pretty devastating, wouldn't it? It could be, yeah. And again, it's is this good for the federal government? And a lot of people would say, yes, it is, right. uh, because they need to get into balance with their budgets. But uh, it's not necessarily a good thing for New Mexico. Right. However, uh, one other aspect of this is that several years ago, less than a decade ago, we had two of the most powerful U.S. senators there in Washington, right. uh, Jeff Bingaman and Pete Domenici. They had lots of seniority. At one time, they were a ranking member and chairman of the Energy Committee, which has wow. a lot of uh, sway in terms of what projects, uh, what facilities are used or not used. And uh, that was very nice for the labs in particular. We also had an experienced uh, House delegation. That t situation's totally evolved. We have uh, very uh, young, relatively inexperienced senators now, and that situation, with the exception of Steve Pierce, Mm -hmm. who was out of Congress for a little while and then came back but maintained his seniority, uh, the House is relatively new and inexperienced. So again, this is a probably a good thing because the, uh, the bringing home of the bacon, the pork, all sure. that stuff, the earmarks, our inability to get that uh, has been experienced in recent years, uh, more so than it was in the past. Probably good for Washington, not so good for the state of New Mexico. Yep. I, if I remember correctly, the number that you threw out of was 31% of our economy was impacted by gas in doing that. Do you know the percentage for what we're talking about as far as federal? Most people put the federal impact in New Mexico right at a third as well. So 31% okay. oil and gas, uh, approximately 33% uh, also relating to the federal spending here. So, uh, yeah, those are two huge drivers of New Mexico's economy, yep. neither of which are as as stable or growing in the ways that they have traditionally been. So it's a real uh, challenge for New Mexico policymakers right now. Wow. Uh, 
how are we seeing these issues as far as maybe downsizing the federal and, and of course, the gas that we talked about earlier? How are they affecting the average guy on the street? How are, how's that happening in their pocketbook for you? Well, New Mexico never really recovered to a great extent from the economic downturn 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. Unlike most other states, uh, Texas, just one example, but all the states surrounding us have seen uh, job growth coming out of those uh, mm -hmm. of that downturn. New Mexico has really not experienced a great deal of job growth. And we've seen also our workforce participation rate. That is a, a number that I believe more reflects uh, the health of our um, workforce and the economic situation than say unemployment rate. Right. Our uh, workforce participation rate l collapsed literally mm. during the uh, uh, economic downturn and it really hasn't recovered a great deal. So we have a lot of people in New Mexico who are out of work for whatever yes. reason. Maybe they are choosing it but a lot of these people were in the workforce before and they haven't returned to the workforce. And that is uh, a negative for production in New Mexico, for tax revenues, all those things. And to the extent that a lot of these people are on government programs, mm -hmm. uh, we've got additional burdens that we didn't have before. So it's, those are real challenges. Uh, and we need more jobs and economic growth in our state for sure. And, you know, you and I have talked previously about uh, the need to be able to make New Mexico look more desirable to businesses to bring them in here from different places. That's right. So maybe that'll come in the f hopefully in the future, in the near future. Uh, poverty is a huge issue in our state, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, what spillover effect uh, does poverty have in our community? Well, obviously, uh, anytime you have a struggling private sector, or even you know, the federal spending has declined, that will negatively impact your poverty. New Mexico has always been a poor state, yes. but we've really seen uh, an explosion and an additional challenge in the last few years in terms of poverty. Mm. And when you have more poor people, it makes educating them much more challenging. Yes. Every teacher will talk about uh, kids that show up to school with uh, parents who aren't able to spend time with them, reading to them, or whatever they're, they're doing or not doing in the house, not getting adequate food. So you have right. educational related issues. Uh, and you know, some would say it's a chicken or the egg. Should, right. uh, how do we turn around our education system so that we can create better economic growth? And, mm -hmm. and that's a real discussion to have, but let's just say that there are significant overlaps on those issues. Then you have uh, the crime and criminal justice related issues and we have certainly seen those in spades in recent years as yes. well where we've had conflicts between police and different whether they're mentally ill people or whoever sure. out on the streets homeless tent city right all these things directly relate to the poverty situation now there are certain people that no amount of help is necessarily going to get them on the right track but there yeah. are a lot of people on that fringe, the, the borderline, they may not be the next CEO of a business, <laughs> but if they have a, a job working at McDonald's or doing something productive, they don't fall into that mental illness category right, and right. wind up on the streets and wind up being uh, more of a burden on society. And the fact that we have such a weak private sector mm -hmm. makes more people likely to move into that uh, burden category than the productive category. So. Uh, it's something that policymakers really need to tackle and, uh, you know, education and uh, the criminal justice issue. Uh, they work both ways. Yes. Uh, the criminal justice situation and the crime, certainly a deterrent in some respects to businesses locating here. But if we put the policies in place in, in all those areas to make them successful, we can do a lot to alleviate them both directions. You know, a lot of times I, I hear where we're ranked nationally about in the poverty level, but the reality is, is that we, we have people out there that with just some help, they can get right back into the workforce and be able to do some things. Not everyone, as you had mentioned, but sure. certainly some of those people. We and if you have a job, you feel better about yourself, you feel your self-esteem, right. and that can save some people. I don't know how many, you know, what percentage, right, but right. it can save a significant number of people from uh, those severe problems. Wonderful. Uh, how did the recent legislative session uh, address or fail to address the economic issues in the state? Well, let's just say that the House of Representatives, uh, which did switch to Republican control, I felt that they had a really 
fantastic session in terms of putting forth basic common sense ideas mm -hmm. to reform New Mexico's economy and improve it. Uh, the Senate, which remains under Democrat control, uh, there was a lot of questioning whether they would be uh, willing to compromise, to uh, come to some agreement, to turn around New Mexico's economy. They were not as interested in that uh, kind of uh, situation. So we really had a stalemate between the governor and the House and then the Senate on the other side. So you had bills moving forward through the House and just dying in the Senate. Mm -hmm. uh, right to work being one example. Uh, passed, right. the, passed the House, it was very controversial. Uh, it's been shown that right to work, which simply means you don't have to join a labor union or pay right. union dues as a precondition of employment. Uh, that uh, was, is very popular, uh, even among Democrats. It's a 65% mm -hmm. positive issue nationwide. Uh, it passed through the House and was paired with a minimum wage increase, which is very popular among many Democrats, but the Senate refused to uh, really act on that issue. Mm. And there's been uh, myriad uh, educational reforms as well, speaking about that, social promotion uh, of third graders, uh, okay. eliminating that procedure where you just move kids along, even if they can't read, move them through the education system. Uh, that failed once again. Hmm. And uh, we've been working also on school choice in New Mexico and giving parents and students the power to choose where they go to school, not where lines are drawn on a map right. and bureaucrats tell them to go to school. Uh, unfortunately, that one as well uh, mm -hmm. seems to have fallen by the wayside. And those are just some of the big issues we've worked on uh, during this legislative session. And it really seems, you know, the House was engaged, ready to pass a lot of these uh, reforms. And the Senate often was not even in the ball game, not even looking at some of those serious issues. Very important issues as well, very important. Uh, what have the local governments been doing uh, as far as their need to address what's going on regarding those issues? Well, uh, I wish I could say that the uh, local governments were enacting uh, pro-growth economic policies, but a lot of times they're also piling up tax burdens and making uh, our state, our local communities somewhat less competitive. And, the Bernalillo County Commission just enacted a 3 uh, per percent increase on uh, the gross receipts. And the gross receipts tax is, a lot of people think it's a sales tax, but it's this it's, uh, yeah. horrendous tax that is regressive. So uh, more of it is borne uh, as a percentage by low-income people. So it hurts right. those folks. Uh, it's charged at relatively high rates. Uh, Albuquerque had been at 7%, now it's going to be uh, 7 and 3 uh, eighths percent. So it's really grown up, or 7 and 3 sixteenths, I apologize. But it, a significant increase for theoretically addressing some of these mental health ish issues. Mm -hmm. But they really don't have a game plan moving forward, the county commission, uh, to do this. And yet we're raising taxes, creating more right. burdens on businesses, those people who'd be creating jobs uh, and maybe keeping some of these fringe folks employed and out of uh, these facilities and off the streets. But instead, we're raising taxes at a time when just our economy is still laid out on the mat, uh, not getting up uh, and not recovering where, where we'd like to see it. Uh, Paul, thank you for being here with us today. You, you always bring such great information, and uh, it helps me, I know, uh, understand a little bit more about what's going on, and certainly our viewers. So thanks for your time. Thank you, and I wish I could bring more positive information to bear. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Well, we are going to have you back, and we're going to talk a little bit more about what happened in the legislature later on, and uh, we'll do that then. Thank you. You bet. For the viewers today, uh, I encourage you to pay attention to what's going on in our legislative and in our government. Uh, as always, these are things that do affect you. Thank you for being part of Joy in Our Town. My name is Mike Cosgrove. Have a blessed day. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network and made possible by your telephone dollars. Your continual support can keep Joy in Our Town brought to your home every day. So write Joy in Our Town, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.